A new study by a team at the University of Melbourne's Flory Institute on the treatment of strokes concludes that faster delivery of clot-destroying drugs after a stroke greatly improves the recovery chances of the patient. Speeding up treatment by one minute adds about two days of healthy life to the stroke victim. Well, the study has been published in the American journal Stroke, and joining us is the lead author of the study, Associate Professor of Neurology at the University of Melbourne, Ate Miratoya. Professor Ate Miratoya, many thanks for joining us. This Thank is you. about clot-busting drugs. What's the effect when they're given to a stroke victim? Yes, th this was a study, uh, a world first study that we published today, which uh, uh, comes from the uh, Royal Melbourne Hospital, the University of Melbourne and the Flory Institute. And we demonstrated for the first time how important it is to give the clot busting drug very early. Uh, the main outcome of our study was that for every 15 minutes that the treatment is delayed, uh, the patient loses a month of healthy life. And the take home message is that whenever symptoms are suitable with a stroke, one should call triple zero immediately. So speed is the essence, I guess, is the take out from this. Is that because it's all about the amount of blood flow going to the brain? It is basically a situation where part of the brain is uh, having not enough oxygen and blood. And the sooner we open that blood vessel and restore the blood flow, the better the chances of recovery and the uh, less the likelihood that a region of the brain dies. And that translates uh, during a patient's lifetime into a huge effect on disability and quality of life and lifetime. I believe in Australia the average time it takes for help to get to a stroke victim after an ambulance is called, correct me if I'm wrong, is about 70 to 80 minutes. What does this That's mean correct. for someone's chance of um, healthy survival, meaningful survival? Now, uh, the 80 to 70 minutes is the average delay in the hospital, so after a patient has arrived, for it to take to image the patient, take the blood tests, evaluate uh, the patient uh, physically take the full history and start the trip. Now, we've been able to cut that at the best centers in the world to only 15 minutes. Royal Melbourne Hospital is one of them. And uh, that's a model of how the health services can be improved. However, most of the delay is not within the health service, but it is rather with the patient and their relatives at home, unsure of what the symptoms are uh, due to, hoping that they'll go away, which is very human, not wanting to make a fuss as a stroke never causes any pain, uh, and then it's too late to treat them anymore, and the consequences often long-term disability, even institutional care or death. So how do you get this message out? Because if it's not the health system or health practitioners, obviously this involves some kind of a, a public information campaign. That's exactly, and that's what I'm doing at the moment, uh, talking to you. I'm trying to get with this study the message across that even though stroke symptoms are often vague, sometimes only a, sm a mild droop of the face, a mild discoordination of the arm or the leg, or funny speech, unable to understand uh, speech, or, or mild visu visual uh, problems with, uh, with seeing things normally, they could be the signs of stroke. And it's always okay to call for help immediately. It's important to call immediately. And if you do, the great ambulance services and the great uh, uh, health uh, services in the emergency departments will sort out whether it's a stroke uh, uh, and uh, whether treatment is indicated. But they can't do it if help was not called for immediately. Professor Ate Miratoya from uh, Melbourne University's Flory Institute, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.